Imagine finding yourself so desperately unhappy that you're forced to desert your husband in order to make sense out of your life, even though you're two months pregnant. Well, Dana Delaney does just that in her provocative upcoming TV movie, The Patron Saint of Liars. Dana first received national attention and two Emmy Awards for Best Actress as Army Nurse Colleen McMurphy on ABC's China Beach. She's also in a new film called Wide Awake, playing out an obstetrician and mother who's at a loss when it comes to answering her own son's questions about life and death. Please welcome Dana Delaney. <laughs> by your movie because just to set this up for the audience it's about, it's about a woman who leaves her husband and she's two months pregnant but she doesn't tell him that upon right. leaving and so mm -hmm. I have a clip let's show you this first and then we can talk about the movie that son is a peach of a man isn't he yeah I guess so have you ever been in love no you will be God will send you someone good to love God already sent you someone good and you didn't want him. Is that what happened to you? No, not me. Now, with that scene, you've already gone on to a home for unwed mothers. Mm -hmm. What intrigued you about this role? Because this woman, is she's got a lot of problems. She's basically run away from the truth in her life. Yeah, uh, it's based on a book with the same name by Ann Patchett, which is a wonderful book. And there are a couple things. Uh, one, I liked what it said about mothers, that at some point in your life, you have to accept who your mother is with all of her limitations and know that she's not perfect, she doesn't have all the answers, and that you can still love her for that. And also what it says about, um, you know, we, we all have these secrets that we keep inside us that we're ashamed of and we think they're so huge and we never say them and we hold them, maybe even till our death we hold them. And if we just said them, people would go, what's the big deal? You know, we love you, it doesn't matter, it doesn't change our Have you ever had a point you. in your life where you said something you were afraid to say and that was the response? Uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I think the other thing is even if we think that we can keep them inside, uh, life, fate, the universe, God, whatever, is going to force them out anyway. So you might as well let it out now because it's going to happen at some point. So you're not a person, I take it, who believes that it's okay to, to lie? Well, I used to be one of those people that felt like they had to be t telling the truth about everything. I mean, truth is really important to me. I think, uh, because I think there are a lot of secrets in my family. And so I was really adamant about always telling the truth. And then when you get older, I think you realize that people don't really want to hear it. You know, there are things that are better left unsaid, and it's, it's an adult thing not to always tell everything, I think. You talked about secrets in your own family. You come from a family where your parents were divorced, right, mm -hmm. when you were 19. Did you understand yeah. growing up that there were problems? Is that? Yeah, I think yeah. there were always problems. Yeah, I mean, as a child, you feel those things. You feel the tension. And after that, you said you, you didn't, weren't sure you believed in marriage. Have you changed the way you feel? Because I know you've been with somebody now for quite a few years. Yeah. But... Um, it's always evolving. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, I, I think what I, what I saw happen to my mother was uh, economically she was really affected. And one thing I vowed to myself... You mean after the divorce? Yeah. yeah. One thing I said to myself was that I was never going to rely on a man for money and that I would always have my own money. And I've done that. And I always tell young girls that, to put yourself first, that you will always be able to have romance. But if you don't rely on anybody for money, then you can love someone for who they are, not for what they can give you. So what do you rely on your mate for? What is his name, by the way? He's uh, Henry adorable. Henry Cherney. He's Henry. an actor, right? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. What do you rely on him for? If it's not for economics, what? Well, first of all, he's the nicest guy in the world. And the other thing is, he totally wants me to be me. That, that's all he wants, is for me to be me. And it makes him happy when I am happy and I'm true to myself. And so who are you when you say you're true to yourself? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> who does he think you are? Um, I don't know. You'd have to ask him. I don't know. I don't know. We, we respect each other a lot, and we also give each other a lot of space, which I think is important. I read that you had written a diary when you were growing up, and so did I. And when I went back home to Rhode Island recently, they did a little spot I was reading from my diary oh, about God. kissing a boy. <laughs> and that when you went back and looked through it, you saw that as a kid, you didn't have a lot of self-esteem. Well, you know, I don't know if you found this, but I find that I am writing about the same damn thing every year. It never changes. You know, from the age of 6 to 40, I'm still writing about the same thing. What stuff? 
oh, you know, I'm too fat, you know, or God, I wish I, you know, I wish I felt better about this or this. Or why don't they like me? You know, stupid things just through the Nile. So how have you built your own self-esteem then? Because you seem like a woman who has a lot of self-confidence. Well, I think it's very, I mean, you probably understand this. It's, it's very hard for women, girls yeah. especially, because you're bombarded with how you're supposed to look and act and all this stuff. And it's mostly just age. I finally realized I'm okay, you know. It's okay just to be me, and then I don't have to be perfect. Do you really not look at the magazines anymore? I hate looking at fashion magazines. I just hate it because I think it's all about selling things and that you have to look this way and, oh, that length is wrong now. This is it this year. And it's, my God, if I just kept the things I wore 20 years ago, I, I'd be in style right now. <laughs> well, you look great, Dana. You're going to join us for Question of the Day. Okay. We'll be right back with more of Dana Delaney. favorite actresses um, from one of our favorite shows of all time actually we were talking about how good that show was China Beach and the drama and good good television so we thought instead of sitting here making you feel really good about yourself we <laughs> ask a question where we end up getting jerked around by our families yeah today's question comes from Libby Duncan who watches us on KOMO TV in Seattle we call them Como our good affiliate there and Libby asks what do you do that most embarrasses your family. <laughs> Talk about turnabout fair play. So, Dana, you're our guest. Let's I really start with thank you. Libby for that question. <laughs> uh -huh. Thank you, Libby. Yeah, thanks. Uh, well, it was my birthday last Friday, oh, and I was here in New York, thank you, with Happy my birthday. family having dinner. So I said to them, okay, here's the question. What do I do that embarrasses you? So they went around the table, and I just want you to know, they were so happy to be asked this question. <laughs> 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 Finally. So my brother said the way I dress, what, what's wrong with the way you dress? He thinks I dress too suggestively. Really? I mean, not. To, I think it was not ever today. since. Ever since he said, ever since X to E, and he's scared to see what I'm going to be wearing. Okay. Uh, well, you were yeah, naked in there. Yeah, he's yeah. my brother. You know. I said, right. you know I, said, I said to him, well, that says more about you than about me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> if he's older. Okay. Uh, my sister said when I sing. She gets embarrassed. Oh, you sing. Okay. Well, I didn't like to sing. No, no, mm -hmm. no. In my family, they never let me sing. It was always shut up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and my mother said when I tell bad jokes, which means when I tell a dirty joke. <laughs> oh, okay. Your family just loved the heck out of oh, you. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sing, no singing, no dirty joke telling, mm -hmm. and fix those clothes. Yeah, really. <laughs> you got it. What about you, Envy? Same thing. I asked my family last night. They all loved the question. Um, my husband said, I don't embarrass him. I infuriate him. So there was no embarrassment. <laughs> ben says, I embarrass him, the nine-year-old, when I kiss him now and say, sweetie, in front of friends. That embarrasses him. Gabe says he's embarrassed, but I like to dress up in costumes. They all know this. Mm -hmm. Gabe's embarrassed about that. Like like and Lily's embarrassed that I wear jeans because she's a dressy, dressy girl. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> there's no Everybody, end there's no end. Only the dog and the cats get their mouths shut, mm -hmm. you know? But I, I get the feeling after this show, they'll be <laughs> way in on it. Lily loves the fact on this show that you never wear jeans, though. Oh, she loves She's that. She's going to be really embarrassed I by know. me today. <laughs> yeah, I called my mom this morning, too, to ask her, and she said, just about everything you do, she's, you know, rolled out a list, and it's like, wow, well, number one, number two. She said, when we go out to dinner, and I laugh very loudly, and I speak very loudly, so that embarrasses the family, um... <laughs> But the way I dress, the, the things I do to my hair, <laughs> my nails. Um, uh, she also said, Debbie, I remember when you used to be a little girl and we'd go to church and you would always want to wear mini skirts and go -go boots. It was so embarrassing. <laughs> I, was, I don't remember that, but she does. So just about everything I do, my clothes, <laughs> my laughter. <laughs> I know a lot of people think it's Puerto Rican, but it's not as Puerto Rican. <laughs> <laughs> we met her, and she sounds just like no, that. Exactly. She's exactly. wonderful. Uh, mom is great. Right. <laughs> All right, Joie. Um, I think that when I clog dance, I think that's... <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> but you're good at it. I, I, I really think that that humiliates the entire group. It's <laughs> only when you do that nude. Uh, especially when I'm what you're wearing. Yeah. Remember that big that show we had, the big belly laugh? I could just imagine you doing a belly laugh and a clog dance nude. That'll work. <laughs> okay. I call
called my mom, and my, my mom's one of these moms that just really, she can't, she doesn't find very much wrong. So she said, mm -hmm. you don't do anything that embarrasses us. Mm -hmm. And I said, Mom, everybody's going to say, yeah, right, Star. So she said, let me think, let me think. And she finally said, what embarrasses her is me on television now because she used to be the big time woman in the hairdresser <laughs> and now people go are you star jones's mother she goes no star jones is my daughter <laughs> so she doesn't particularly care right. for that isn't that interesting right. so i'm sorry mom everyone i am shirley byard's daughter yes. so i apologize for that dana Thank I you. wanted to ask you, do we have a, a second? Oh, yeah, because you were saying something about family secrets before in the interview with mm -hmm. Meredith, and I was wondering, what are they? <laughs> <laughs> See, I was too polite to ask. ask. I'm <laughs> married, I don't have to tell everything. <laughs> but I, heard, I heard through the grapevine that your grandfather invented the toilet flush. Is that one of your secrets? This is the other thing that embarrasses my mother. <laughs> My great grandfather, uh, yes, had a flush valve business, Delaney Flush Valves, in Brooklyn. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Still going. Yeah. Not for nothing, but if your great grandfather did not invent that, a whole bunch of people would be embarrassed. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. What what they they we kind of like him. <laughs> <laughs> what did they do before that? Uh, well, it was a what chain. It was a oh, chain. Oh. This he invented the, the lever? Mm -hmm. this that's one. that's yes. very cool. Well, yeah. but they were advanced it, you know. <laughs> oh, I think that's yeah. great. And, 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 if you go, I'm into toilets, as people know what's yes, the show on a regular Are basis. You? Well, I'm interested in it as a <laughs> phenomenon. <laughs> I am. I am. Why not? Exactly. exactly. No, it's not going to be ashamed of that. If you look at the flusher, it'll say Delaney Flush Valve. I think it will. It will. It will. It will. Yeah. Way to go, Jason. Not for nothing. Great granddad had it going on. Thank you for coming to visit with us. As you can see, you are welcome to be here with us any, any time. We love having chick sit in the pit with us and hang with <laughs> us. You got it. We'll be right back. Thank you very much. Thank you.